All right, how's everyone doing? Thanks, uh, thanks again for joining uh, another uh, Mash and Journey. Uh, kind of not a barrel pick this time. Now we're gonna today we're gonna do something even uh, maybe a little more fun and uh, a little interesting. So um, Jason will be back in a second. Uh, Dan will be back in a, in a minute. He was trying to figure out a couple of things on his end, but uh, we got the man himself, uh, Mike. Collins. I'm here. Mike, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate You're welcome. It. Thanks for uh, thanks for setting all this stuff up. We appreciate. It. We're uh, we're really excited. I know this is our second batch of samples. And then you said kind of, Hey, let's pump the brakes. We have something different. Let's, let's go down that road. So we were, we were excited to kind of get into this uh, a little bit. So I think this will be a, this will be a really, really fun blend. So, yeah. I mean, and honestly too, like when we do, when we're doing our normal blends on any of our products, I mean, it's, it, you know, we always overestimate 30 extra barrels per batch. So to, because you're just going to have to be going through them until you find the right ones that are really going to be on profile for what you're going for, for that particular batch. So truthfully, that process of starting with three, I mean, we were only working with three, so, you know, chances are you're going to want to configure it. So that's actually pretty common for the process to, to kind of go back and forth. Actually, I thought it was pretty, pretty helpful just to, to kind of keep whittling away at it. But I know you guys did blends with the first wave that we sent too. Yeah, we did. We spent quite a bit of time with, uh, with the ladies kind of going through some of this stuff, we bounced it <laughs> off them. And uh, yeah. it was, uh, it was actually, it was actually a lot of fun. So we, uh, we had a good, we had a good time, even though, even though we're not using any of those samples, I think we, uh, we probably sat out there for a couple hours doing that, I bet. So it was, it was a lot of fun. So it is fun. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it is, I do it all the time. I mean, there's times like I always have, like, I always just have these things. This is actually usually what I drink. I just have like samples. Sometimes I'll just take yeah. them and pour them in. I bought it. And then I'll be like, oh, Danny, I got this great blend. It was a toasted okay. batch with a, a 21 rye. And then I think I had like a 99 corn five-year sample. And Danny's like, well, what, what uh, milliliter percentages did you use? And I was like, I don't know, dude. I eyeballed it. <laughs> like, yeah, what do you know? Exactly. exactly. So I always, yeah. I always come up with great blends, but there's never any notes. It's usually something I just <laughs> whittle together on my own, and then I try to recreate it. And that's okay. Works. Nothing nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, we, uh, we, we sat outside, and we kind of tasted through them, and um, – Man, the, the weeder really, we found the first time we went through it, the weeder was really impacting the blend so much. Um, uh, you know, every time we went through it, we kind of kept whittling it down until we got to a point where it was just enough weeded yeah. influence to kind of make an impact in the bourbon, but not overtake it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're wondering with these new samples, how that's going to fare tonight. So we... We came in pretty uh, prepared, dude. I don't know you're gonna, you might be a little impressed here. So what we did yeah. already? Yeah. So here, Wait. so here's yeah. So here's yeah. what we did. So we uh, we started out basically with uh, with uh, five mLs of of each, and and we put that in the little cylinder, of course, and we let yeah. this kind of sit for I don't know, maybe the last half hour or so, something like that. So we're just kind of letting that go, and then we have in our glasses here each each component broken down individually. So I think. I think maybe what we'll do is we'll leave we'll leave this kind of to mingle a little bit, and mm -hmm. then if we want, Jason, we can kind of go through each one of these components, see what we like more about one versus the other, and then try to kind of go from there. What do you think? Yeah, we'll taste through these real quick, and then this way, when we're done tasting through them, we'll see what the the evened out blend sounds like of all three of them together, the same proportion, and then we could probably work off that, and then tweak it a little bit, and then whatever. <laughs> Whatever you guys, you know, whatever you guys uh, suggest as far as the blend. But, yeah, Penelope literally sent us – it's like – they sent us like the freaking Dr. <laughs> Emmett Brown the Dr. Emmett that. Brown lab kit. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So we're going back Dude. to the future here. So we got we got samples. We got a graduated cylinder, and we even got yeah. some pipettes for each one. It's, this yeah. is awesome. Well, we when's are, the last time you used the term graduated cylinder? I don't know. Seventh grade chemistry? Chemistry yeah, class. 30, 30, 30 seconds ago was the last time I used that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. No, but I mean, honestly, those are fun kits. I mean, we've been, we've, it's kind of been our shtick. I mean, we, we, you know, when we started Penelope, we were just buying two year old barrels. And we always kind of knew as we were, we wanted to start out, we wanted to always try to create, like, kind of have like a consistent product. So instead of at the, even at the time three years ago, we could have, you know, maybe, purchased older barrels from MGP or, you know, gotten some older stuff. And there's Danny. What's up, man? You rocking? You you muted still? Or you got, Danny oh, might have some technical there you are. I, I, We hear you. Okay, good. There You're he good. is. You're there's good. Danny. I just, there he is. I just ran upstairs and grabbed another laptop. I don't know what the, I was literally on a meeting like two hours ago and 
had no issues. Oh, you might know, have been unbelievable. Maybe, maybe the other one was a yeah. Mac or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might yeah. have been. Or a PC. Um, oh, God. So, I mean, honestly, from a blending perspective, yeah, that's always been our kind of thing. I mean, we started with younger barrels, but we always kind of knew, um, you know, it's just that Rome wasn't built in a day right? Like let's respect the process. And we just kind of said slow and steady, but we wanted to make sure we had inventory um, for kind of future years. And so what we were doing when we started with two year kind of come up with like a consistent or kind of core blend core mash bills we're using in our blend. Every time we dump a barrel, we try to backfill it with two more um, was kind of our strategy. Um, it's, you know, were we fiscally that responsible the entire way? I don't know, but you know, that's been kind of our process, <laughs> but for the most part, what's pretty cool is now we're, as we look ahead to 2022, I mean, you're only talking three years now for next year, all of our barrels for barrel strength are all five year, which, you know, it's not like groundbreaking, but for the, for the inventory and the volume that we think we're going to do, I think that's, it's nice to have the reassurance that there, you even have um right. barrels to even work with and uh so that's been us and we've always blended so we've always been a kind of a blending organization since the beginning and it's kind of been fun to do these with with folks such as yourself so we appreciate yeah. it so danny why don't you uh, introduce yourself uh what you do for penelope and i see i just see a friggin toolbox with a hundred thousand samples behind you so <laughs> and I, a compressor i just got <clears throat> i just gotta imagine him as the mad um <clears throat> excuse me the mad scientist back there so <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Uh, no, I, I do a lot of the, the initial blends, um, blending and operations, like just kind of behind the scenes kind of stuff, all the production. Right. <laughs> Danny built our bottling line. He's he's clearly not a, ma a man of many words tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, just so you know, I built everything. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny, 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 yeah. Danny, you're like, I don't know, man, I do stuff. Yeah, I was like, I was waiting to hear like maybe like that all the all the bottles are all hand blown like on his off time or something. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I, I I blend, I build, I I barrel, I do the yeah. three, I do the three B's all day, baby. <laughs> so I guess whoever whoever wants to whoever wants to take it, I, I guess you know Mike or Danny, I guess either one. Um, why, why don't we talk a little bit about kind of the brand, you know, where, where it started, kind of where we are now and, you know, kind of everything, everything in between, give everybody a good idea of, of the hows and whys of Penelope. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, really, Danny, I'll kick it off and you, whatever, chime in, whatever you have to, I mean, you know, so Danny and I, you know, we were next door neighbors growing up uh, in New Jersey, um, literally right next door to each other. Uh, Penelope, the namesake is my two and a half year old daughter. Um, you know, and honestly, I, Scott, you remember, I think you're one of the first people we spoke to when we started yeah. this thing, um, probably, probably back in early 2019, if I remember correctly. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a wild ride. I mean, we started out, I mean, we, we source our bourbon from MGP and, you know, Danny, neither Danny nor I had a, had a really any sort of background in this space, but, you know, I think we kind of were both going through some tumultuous times with our wives trying to have kids. And when, you know, when we found out, my wife and I found out we were having a girl, it just, you know, we both love bourbon and, you know, I don't know, sometimes all these mixed emotions when you have, you're having your first child, I guess, after, you know, kind of a crazy time. And uh, I mean, we knew we were, we were going to name her Penelope. Long story short, that I just had a nice fit to it. A little bit different. Um, you know, we always kind of said, look, we're writing our story now. I'm not going to be able to compete with the guy that's got George Washington on his bottle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. However, you know, but I think we can just, right? You know, it's like, we're going to make mistakes along the way. Let's be transparent. Let's be an open book. Let's just, we are who we are type thing. And, and just try to keep getting better batch over batch. And, you know, what started out as us trying to piecemeal the supply chain together. Um, I mean, heck dude, we were selling it from our car. Um, we were doing That's really crazy. well, actually, we were selling a lot from our car in New Jersey in the, in the early days. Um, and, you know, just trying to piece this whole thing together. So what started as having like contract bottling at various kind of partners and MGP, to now we kind of have a, you know, a pretty, pretty comprehensive supply chain. Thanks to Danny, where, you know, we're, we just finished up batch eight of our barrel strength, um, a big four grain run at Bardstown bourbon company. Um, you know, we, we opened up, you know, we got our own DSP. Um, so we have our own bottling line, which we're really working on projects such as this. So private select, um, and you know, Oh, thanks Kelsey. I uh, appreciate it. And so, yeah, just things like that. So we've kind of come a long way. And, and, you know, I think from where we were, we, we really, we were like a deer in the headlights uh, when we first started doing this to where we're at, where we're at. And, you know, I still think we're, we're in those kind of early innings. So we're excited about, you know, 
the future for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was a, I mean, it, it's been a, you know, a relatively short period of time, but it just seems like there's so much. I mean, obviously for you guys, it, it, it I'm sure it feels even, even, you know, more complex, but from where it started to where it is now, I mean, it's just completely exploded for you guys. I mean, in a, in a really good way. So, you know, congrats on that. <laughs> Thanks, man. In this short time we've been in, you know, been doing it, we've seen the industry change too, you know, just in this short amount of time, I'm sure you have too. It's been wild. Yeah. The, the amount of, you know, I've been saying it for this list last year and probably most of last year, the amount of limited editions, special releases, new product lines, product, uh, product line, um, uh, you know, expansions that are permanent. I mean, it's just, it, it, there's so much growth going on, not to mention all the creative stuff that a lot of the independent, you know, bottlers and some of the, um, some of the craft distillers are doing. I think, uh, I do think what you guys are doing when it comes to blending, you know, if, if you, if you don't have the crazy age stuff that you can get your hands on, it's, it's always great to fool around with blend. You're, you'll always get something unique. I think you guys definitely excel at that. Yeah. 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 No, sure. we, we appreciate it. I mean, look, we were, it took a lot of trial and error. I mean, we've had some, in those early days, we had some pretty shitty batches. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, well, we, well, at the time, even we thought they were amazing. We're like, this is amazing. Um, but, you know, even our palettes has, have changed. I remember when we first came to market, we like thought we were the coolest guys <coughs> in the world. <coughs> Got a bourbon and it's like a two year 80 proof. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, you know, that was like our big thing. We thought we were so damn cool. And honestly, but I mean, we, we kind of always had a thought with that product. Um, 80 proof. It was meant for kind of newbies, folks that are kind of just getting into bourbon. And I'll be honest with you, man, that product does really, really, really well. Cause it's, we're not really more, it's not really meant, even I tell our wholesalers this, I say, look, this is not meant really for the big bourbon drinker. So if you're going to a liquor store to sell it, like the guy yep. that's real into bourbons probably maybe go talk to the vodka buyer, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so it, that's actually a harder product to sell, but once that takes hold, um, that's been a pretty consistent and pr it's been a good, good, uh, good offering for us. And it's kind of fitting a, I think it's fitting a mold for a lot of these newbies that are coming into the space. Well, and I, I said to you early on, I thought the big, the big factor with that 80 proof was the fact that you were like not chill filtering it and stripping anything out of that. I mean, that really helped yeah. that, that 80 proofer a lot. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've given, I've given that to my, uh, my girlfriend who's not a big whiskey drinker and she actually, she, she digs that one. So, so yeah. My, give her the drink. The drink of choice is that four grain with lemonade and a muddled strawberry. It's hmm. unbelievable. We actually pour that at a lot of our events. We'll have that at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. It's called the Nelly. Thing is lights out. I was actually I was trying to do one of those frozen drink machines for some <laughs> time. <laughs> some like bourbon strawberry lemonade frozen bourbon drinks. <laughs> our our. Uh... Our, my wife and, and Jason's girlfriend, they're, uh, they're very experienced in the bourbon slushy game. So, <laughs> Oh my God, that was yeah. dangerous. That was yeah, so dangerous. dangerous. So, all right. So I guess, why don't we get into, why don't we get into some, some blending? So like we said before, we have, we have like, we already kind of three parts um, of, of the blend we have. So I guess let's talk a little bit about what we have so that everybody kind of understands like what we're at. So, now you labeled them so we know exactly what everything is. So I'm assuming a 99% corn whiskey of some sort, right? Um, then we had a 45% uh, wheat bourbon and a 21% uh, uh, rye bourbon, correct? Right. So the 99 corn is is a bourbon too. A bourbon, yeah, yeah. So okay, so it is a bourbon. It's not a light whiskey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Scotty, mind, too, these are the these are the these are the same mashes that we use for yeah. pretty much every one of our products. And I could tell already. I think you you were totally right, Mike. That the these these three are they just seem a little bit more complex than for the sure. first box did. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, these yeah. because because that was one of the things. Even when we got to talking, there there was a little bit of the the youthfulness in in like one or two. I forget what it was, but. Um, there was one and, and by far these already have much more, you know, complexity factors to us. So that's, that's already a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is funny too. I mean, really, I mean, they, the ones before were same age. Um, I don't know if they, I think they might've been a different lot and that's part of it. I mean, I think it's just kind of a crapshoot sometimes. Yeah. I mean, that's, so when we go into our 
blends, as Danny knows, we, we, you know, you kind of just have to, you got to have more than more barrels than what you need because you know, you're going to kick a bunch out. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so people in the chat wondering about the graduated cylinders, these are, these are 50 milliliter graduated cylinders. I, I know we have, uh, Adriana at Whiskey Mountains is a she's a literal like scientist, so she's she's digging this already. So oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad that they're the plastic ones, but don't yeah. don't judge. <laughs> yeah. All yeah, right. So what do you want to what do you want to try first, Scott? You want to try the weeder or the corn or um, the yeah? Why don't, why don't we Why don't we start with the Why don't we start with the corn the corn whiskey? What do you think? Right. You get? Yeah. Well, that's let me good. let me ask you guys in in terms of trying these three components individually, what what order would you suggest we try them in? a good question actually i don't think i've ever been at, we've never been asked that one danny you're I mean, muted I mean, again i mean i know the default would be like to want to start with like a weeder because it's softer and then go to like anything else but i mean with that you know anyway go ahead sorry danny well, you're danny, muted. danny's muted danny you're muted bud danny look at him go he's just going danny you're muted scott can you unmute him um there, you oh, there he is all right <laughs> first time on a live stream today yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, I usually start with like the 99 corn and then move into the wheat and then the rye just because. Okay. That's, that's, right. that's how I, that's how I have it set up. So Sounds good. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. So corn, let's go here. Danny loves that 99 corn too. Yeah. It's very, really like very, very vanilla custard, which is nice. nice yeah. This is all, this is all, this is all cake frosting, man. Yeah, this smells good. Sure. I'll be honest with you. We get a lot of 99 corn that is not that good. I mean, it's there's again, you just have to kind of work with how you piece it together, and that goes into your blend. I actually remember that 99 corn um, being like very like frosted flakes ish. Oh, yeah. Um, it, definitely, it definitely has a sweet cereal note to it as well. Yeah. A um, little, little bit of a, a black pepper. And then, even what about a, um, are you getting any kind of like a, like a black tea or a green kind of note on that? I can see that. I get a little bit more on the palate than the nose. Where do I go? Oh, geez, you're already diving into it. Jesus. Yeah, I, I can't. I've been smelling these like all week. I can't. I couldn't wait. <laughs> wait, have you now? You got to remind us. Have you guys? Have you guys oh. tried these before? No, no, we haven't. Yet. I have not. We have no, not tried I, these. Oh, this is the first man. time. First. Yeah. Well, I hope you like them at least. Have, this could be awkward. We have, we have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I just, just if I just turn the stream off, then you guys don't know. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Scott's gonna mute himself when he goes to say what he thinks of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm getting a little apricot on the palate, uh, or yeah. or peach, whatever you want to call it, on the corn, on yeah, the 99 right. percenter. That's nice. Yeah, I was, nice. I was thinking even like some like some trop like tropical fruit there too. Like mm -hmm. it reminds me of like juicy fruit bubble gum. Yeah, mm -hmm. juicy fruit bubble gum for sure. We could just single barrel it and call it a night. <laughs> uh, you would love that, wouldn't you, Mike? No, no I love this shit. Are you kidding me? We're gonna put you through the ringer. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's getting it's getting a little bit more juicy fruit as it opens up too. It's nice. These are, I will say, these these three components just off the nose are way more interesting than the first batch you sent us. They yeah. just seem they just seem like a little bit more depth of flavor. So. Yeah, um, we did okay. have. I mean, we we were tinkering with some blends with that other one. Um, we got we got a few interesting ones, but these I really like these particular barrels. Mm -hmm. Really nice, really nice, like spice. There's that lingering spice on this for sure. <laughs> say hi. Yeah, it's got some nice uh, spice for a 99 percent corn. Yeah, I don't know if that's the uh, the proof. What's the proof on this, Danny? This was a uh, this was low 110.2. Wow, that's actually very low. Low for for these. So I don't know why we picked these. They were they were not, you know, they they stood out from like the batch of barrels. So you know, as single barrels blending these single barrels, it makes it a little more unique. It's got a it's got a beautiful uh yeah like Scott's call it the spice on it is just nice. I mean, yeah. you wouldn't expect that type of nice little spiciness from a from a ninety nine percent corn you know whiskey. Oh, no. And that was the interesting about this one. It was like, you know, it was like, hey, did someone put the 21 rye label on this bag? <laughs> <laughs> well, and what's cool too is we actually have a lot of these five year, I think, because it's the five year corn. We have a lot of these five year 99 corns, and we've been using a lot of these in our toasted series too. Oh, so the toasted series at 
if you guys missed that, I, I saw those launched. They sold out on Sealbox pretty much immediately. Yeah. Um, I got and I got I got bottles for both you guys, but I was waiting. I think I was waiting for batch eight because you're, wanted- you're gonna wait. You're gonna wait to see if we uh, crapped on these before you send us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look, we'll yeah. talk samples. Yeah. In we'll like talk 30 samples minutes. Later. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the weeder. All right. This this was the one. This was the one from the. Uh, uh, the original one that threw us off a lot, a lot more. Yeah, than so we, the, we struggled. Yeah, the original weeder that we got, whatever blend we put it into, um, we were telling Mike this earlier, Danny. Whatever blend we put that weeder into, it was just overpowering the blend. That wheat in that first set of samples was, uh-huh. you know, I don't know. I'd say it's like a one out of five hundred kind of pick. Like it that. That weed doesn't really come out like that, you know, out of all the times yeah. that we tasted it. It was like very potent. Yeah. And that's why we just pulled that out in that first batch because we thought it was it was standing out a lot. But then we realized it was overtaking the blends, like you said. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Whatever yeah. whatever me and Scott put it in, we had to get it down to like one. We really wanted to get a four grain. So we were we were like, we had it down to like I think one milliliter just to add in there. So we yeah. <laughs> call it a, a weeder because <laughs> Two or three, you could still taste it. It was overpowering the blend. Yeah, you either you either had yeah. to go like heavy on the wheat, or you need yeah. to like just put a drop in. See, this weeder is a little bit more developed. There's a lot of like honey characteristic in here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More like that honey nut Cheerios. Yeah, I would <laughs> we're staying with the cereal theme. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it is it's it is it's very like that. You know you you want to talk about like doughy or whatever that mm-hmm. may be, but that's definitely there. There's like a pastry note that's there to it. Oh, that's even that's really nice on the palate too, Scott. Man, with these the first two, we're gonna have ourselves a blend, man. Because these yeah. these two these first two components are way beyond the original ones we got. Man, it is. It's very like uh, like frosted flakes. There's just that, and again, really nice spice. Like so far, I love the the spice factor of both of these. Yeah, this isn't this isn't like you know s- smooth bullshit weeder. This is like a developed weeded bourbon. Yeah. Uh, roughly, do we know the proof on this? Seems like there's some proof on this. 119. 119. 119. The entry proof is, I mean, the barrel entry proof is 120. So that thing oh. didn't really simmer down too Ooh, much. I like that. Yeah. Well, that's and, really and, that's, nice. and that's a big, and that's a really big deal right there. I mean, in terms of the complexity of the, of the, of the whiskey is, I mean, look at, I mean, it, it, it didn't lose anything. I mean, if, if anything, I mean, it's, it's right there. So I mean, this is a like a concentrate almost, you know? and it's got a beautiful lingering spice to it. God, you could do a single barrel up that weeder. That thing's nice. It's nice. We the weed is the most in, inconsistent, uh, probably the most inconsistent mash we work with, and we work with that forty-five weed literally on every product we have. Mm. Uh, well, it, all of a sudden, wheat bourbon exploded. So the availability on wheat has been. Well, yeah, Interesting, to say the well, least, but everybody wants poor man's pappy. That's the problem. Well, you know what? You know, the the one thing with this is that like with it being yeah. a weeded with it being a weeded bourbon, like I know it's weeded and this is going to sound like kind of crazy saying it, but you you really pick up that like wheat influence, like the grain influence of the weed, which is kind of nice. Exactly. Sometimes exactly. You, yeah. you nailed it. Sometimes mm-hmm. you get um, with especially with the wheat. Well, Definitely with the wheat, you get more of a, like an earthy taste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of the grain. I, I, somebody told me that's like uh, um, how they harvest it and what comes with the grain. And then it goes in the. the yeah. So, so Danny. Non deer, so baby. What are, yeah. So, what are, what are some of the. <laughs> when you taste like a funky weeder, like what are some of the off flavors that you'll taste in a, in a weeder that you know either hasn't developed correctly or just wasn't right? Uh, well, Obviously a little resin, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. but, uh, you know, I, I don't really like the ones that are too earthy. Like I was saying, yeah. Um, you know, that's kind of off putting and then drives the blend in a weird direction. And when, when that happens, you got to bump up like the rye a lot just to overcompensate for that. I mean, those are the two dominant. Yeah. F- for me, like with the one thing I always get like kind of on a weeder that just like not overly great is that like a high ethanol like it's gasoline i don't know what it is and i've got it on some other brands where it's just like 
it, it's so off putting that you can't even like really drink the stuff. It's so hard to enjoy. Dude, so it's so funny. The number one thing Dan, I, Danny sends me blends. My number one thing I hate the most is ethanol. Yeah. Well, but you know, it's funny. There are people that do like that ethanol, like yeah. not a lot. I, I personally don't. I don't mind ethanol. I don't like when it turns to acetone. Like sometimes, <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. sometimes it smells like nail polish remover. And, and yeah, maybe, you know and what? I'm with you on that. Right. I don't like nail polish remover either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this, uh, this weeder is nice. It's got, it's very like, like whole wheat bread. It's got some honey on it. It's got some really nice developed play, flavors here. Yeah. You got your, you got your, you definitely have some like light vanilla coming out of it. Yeah. A little bit of spice too. I think that's a really nice rounded really weeder. Nice I, spice. I would, I would sip on that. I think both the 99% corn I had did not think we were going to get some spice off that. No. But I think that might make our job a little harder because now we have, we kind of have spice now throughout. Now I'm interested in how this 21% rye is going to go. But you, and you got to keep in mind too. So, I mean, this is about a blend. So if looking at the kind of from a macro perspective, that 99 corn is going to drive the mash bill no matter what. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it's 99% corn in yeah. the mash. So that'll, that'll drive. And so to me, like, that's how, like how you throttle that one is kind of a uh, interesting starting off point, especially as you know, yep. knowing that the, the tasting notes of it as well. Yeah. Because both of these, I mean, so far the, the 99 corn and the 45 wheat, you know, they have the spice, they've got the sweetness, they've got that kind of green kind of component to it. So, I mean, I think it'll be really nice to get now some of that higher rye influence in here to maybe balance out some of that, that sweetness that we're getting. Yeah, th so this rye is very, it's like classic higher, I mean, I get citrus, I get, I get also a lot of almond on this one, which is nice. And you're dare, on the 21 rye? Yeah, dare I say marzipan, but I get yeah. a lot of like almond extract and, uh, and orange. Ooh. Yeah, but what cereal do you get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <What> cereal? Yeah. <laughs> That's the real question, sir. <laughs> Man, almost, almost said like I mean, it's not really cereal, but like, what about what about the uh, the old Cracker Jacks? Yeah, Ooh. with a little vanilla frosting. Love Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. this this has more of the caramels and the rich vanillas that yeah. you that you're looking for, and uh, like almost like the backbone, and then you could kind of mess around with the other two to kind of complement it. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's kind of an interesting way to, to kind of go into this is that, you know, which one of these ultimately becomes the backbone. I know Mike said before that he thought the 99 corn was going to dominate and maybe it will, but man, that 21 rye is, it's got those like just classic, like, you know, bourbon notes that you look for. It's got the spice. It's got a little bit of milk chocolate on the back end too. Uh, mm. yeah, see, that's, that's what's cool. But what's so interesting about, uh, interesting about blending is all of these like notes are literally coming from oak, right? Yeah. So it's so yeah. subtle. And the, like, and, the very blends, subtle and, the, and the blends will either enhance them or make them worse, depending on how they, yeah. how they interact. Honestly, you nailed it. So that's why the blending is so interesting because these are very kind of subtle notes that all of a sudden they're coming from oak, literally just from yeah. the staves um, and from the, the barrel. But like when you start blending them, they're, they are very, very vulnerable to change in very kind of interesting direction. The twenty one percent bourbon is like that's like drinking like spicy velvet if there is such a thing. <laughs> spicy, oh, <yeah>. velvet. <laughs> spicy velvet. <laughs> it's a uh, there's a there's a more um there's more of like a nutty characteristic than I was than I was expecting. Yeah, and it's also a little bit. This one is actually the first one I've come across of the three that's actually drying a little bit. It's drying yeah, it a out bit, a little bit, a little bit, sucking the moisture out a little bit, probably because of that. A little bit of the uh, the higher rye, Danny. What's the what's the proof we have on this one? This is I would uh, guess I would guess higher, but I feel like it might not be because of the high rye. One sixteen point seven. Okay, yeah, see there you go. It feels it's got that pepperiness to it. Yeah. Spicy velvet is Elvis's last meal. Spicy <laughs> velvet. <laughs> uh huh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have some spicy velvet. <laughs> spicy velvet. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm just thinking out loud, but like um, some of the some of the best blends, I think sometimes are where the, where the oak doesn't show through too much, and you kind of are blending the grains together. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes the grains are more dominant, like the grains are more dominant in, in the single barrel or the single mashes. And but then you get like what you were speaking about with the wheat, like that ethanol, like that, and sometimes that youthfulness. Mm -hmm. So when we blend them together. 
you know, some of the best ones are the ones that kill that ethanol, blend out that youthfulness, and you go on this little grain roller coaster. Yeah, I, I would I would imagine with uh, with these being on the younger side, you're really trying to find the perfect complement of grains to one another rather than trying to figure out, you know, barrel notes and stuff like that. So that's a um, spicy, that's a spicy meatball right there. All yeah. three, all three of them. So I think Scott, I think we're going to be happy because Scott and I, we like a nice lingering spicy finish. Yeah. I think all of our, all of our barrel picks from that we've done all have had, everyone says that they've all had a, a really nice long and lingering finish to it. I think we're going to get something pretty similar here too, because all three of these carry some really nice spice. So it's going to, it's going to be interesting to see how they interact. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, what's so what I think is so interesting too about blending is like you could throttle the percentages of like okay, let's take the corn down like two percentage points and bring up the the weed to have. You just throttle it by just I'm talking a very very kind of small amount. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. whoa! There's that nose. There's yeah. that nose, and there's that finish. And yep. it's really a lot of it's just trial and error. Oh, yeah. All right, Scotty. So we have the equal parts blend. So we did 15 milliliter, uh, 15 milliliters. We did five milliliters of each one to see how how equal parts of all these will work. And then we're gonna try. And then we're gonna probably try to go off that and adjust as we after based on what this is. So I'm gonna pour this into Glenn. Let's see. Let's see what happened to this baby. This is the uh, Doc Brown portion, the uh, professor. <laughs> oh yeah, love me some Back to the Future. I was just gonna say exactly. I could every time that movie's on TNT, I watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or HBO, whatever it's on. Great Scott yeah. Marty. That's yeah. pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Oh, so the equal parts you, is a kind of nice. You know, you know what? Like, I mean, I I think like here a little bit. I think like in this blend, and I guess you can let me know, but. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of that that 21 ride that's kind of kicking in a little bit here. You get it at a certain point. Yeah. Well, I'm getting the. I'm also getting the. I'm getting the corn. I'm not getting so much of the wheat like we were no, with the last either. one. Yeah. The wheat's the wheat's kind of hiding a little bit. I th I think I wonder if on the other one now I wonder if the, if the wheat one that we struggled with was just that it was a little funky and that was dominating things. Might have been. It might have been a funky. It funky could have very well been the case. Yeah. You know, definitely. I mean, then yeah, like this, the ones that we pretty, this is pretty nice so far. Ones that we ended up with that wheat batch were like either just all wheat or like very little. <laughs> yeah, sugar kitty, we're gonna blend in 1.21 gigawatts of uh, wheat. <laughs> oh, I think we found our sticker. I think we got the Back to the Future blend. Yeah, yeah I think it's gonna yeah, be the Back yeah, to the yeah. Future blend. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> well, we can't go back to the future. That's well, probably all copyrighted. We don't want to. This will be. Uh, this will. We could. We could call it the uh, the Delorean's plutonium. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the plutonium right, I one. Try. I gotta give this one a try. Yeah, me too. Cheers, guys. Yeah, let me grab mine. Cheers. <laughs> Can I get a real glass? I'm drinking out of. Plastic. Ooh. <laughs> Man, I. It's it's nice, but. I think I think the twenty one percent rye is still like you said, Scott, earlier on the nose. I feel like for me, it's taking over the pal a little bit, and it's it's kind of it, again, it's I like the nose and the palate, but it's drying out the finish a little bit. I'm not getting like that, like that. Uh, it's too much of the spicy velvet. I want a little bit, wanted to round it out a little bit. You more. want a little of the frosted flakes? Yeah, the frosted. <laughs> I want a little bit more of the frosted flakes in there. Yeah. Well, what would you what what would you what would you maybe want to go with next? The corn. I think we should, I, I want to try to amp up the uh, corn a little bit. The ninety nine percent corn in this one. I think. What do you think? Are, are we just gonna Are we just gonna go in fives to, to make? I don't it? know, Dan, Danny. What do you think, man? I could tell you guys the final mash bill of what you're worth. So if you give me the the, I have our we have a mash bill calculator. I could actually tell you the mash. So if you increase it by like five at like whatever it is five ml okay. one ml. Okay. All right. So let's say we well, have five do that to make it consistent. Yeah. So we're going to, so we have 15 milliliters here. So let's do, so we did five, five and five. Yeah. So let's do um, on the corn, let's put it up to eight. Are you, are you, are you saying to put eight in or, or three in? No, no. Eight milliliters of the 99% corn. 
in the graduated cylinder. Yep. Um, let's do. Why don't we to, to do ten to do ten? Why don't we why don't we do why don't we just do eight one one right now to see if that or not that would be two? No, let's do uh let's do eight. Let's see one two three four. Let's do four of the so eight milliliters of the ninety nine percent corn. We'll do four of the twenty one percent rye, and then three of the wheat. And let's see how that works. So 15 ml and right. So with just those percent, with that, those ml percentages, yep. Um, it's going to be 83 corn. So this is going to be a high corn, high corn, six rye, nine wheat, two malt. Interesting. Oh, okay. Malt. And now there might be some rounding. So I got to look, I mean, yeah. I just have it percentaged up. So it's probably three malt if I had to guess. I'm already, I'm already interested in this blend. It sounds cool. Let's see. I don't think I've ever seen one like that actually well where it's two malt <laughs> because the 99 corn only has one percent malt uh, right, you know, Jason, what did you say what did you say on the wheat three three wheat and then 20 and then four milliliters on the 21 percent uh bourbon so <sighs> I don't four know. i i mean i gotta be honest sometimes like I just, I just basically roll the dice, and that's a starting point. You know, you just kind of <laughs> like something between one and ten. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't. I would imagine we're just gonna play around with some stuff here and see what we got. So I, you, no said, you said you said three on the twenty-one, right? Yep. No, four on the twenty-one, three on the wheat. Oh. Four on the uh, three on the wheat, yeah. eight on the corn. Like, I hope you guys can see, but like, even when you go even one, two percent, you know, difference in how you blend it, like changes it dram dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to see what this blend feels like with uh, the higher corn mash bill here. Yeah. Call it the enchantment under the sea dance blend. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I don't think our label. Hey, are you uh, are you pouring this blend in with the original stuff? No, no, no. I'm totally I'm, this new. Is, this is a totally new blend. Yeah. Scott just wants to go all full alchemy here. I'm just going full <laughs> on. All right. All right. I'm gonna pour this in here. Let's see what we get. I just want to see how the higher corn will will affect the other two. All right, so let's see. So this one is our first. So the first one was five, 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 and this one. Okay, Jace, tell me what this one was again. This was eight. This was eight corn, right? Yeah, eight of the ninety-nine percent, four of the twenty-one percent, and three of the wheat of the wheater. Right. And that, and honestly, the final mash bill of that is uh, the the driver. That's eighty th eighty-three percent corn. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh. So that's like a beast of a corn. What's interesting too is that because I haven't we haven't really done much where the corn is the corn percentage is 53 percent yeah. um, total blend. And what's interesting is I've never I don't think we've ever had a mash bill where the wheat was less than ten percent. Because keep in mind the wheat is forty five, which is still a healthy amount. Still a healthy amount, yeah. On that on that wheat mash. So this is uh, this is actually nine percent wheat. Have we done, Danny? I don't think we. No, I can't remember. I mean, the lowest I think I've seen our weed is like at thirteen, no. it's maybe twelve, yeah. but nothing lower than that. Yeah. See, now my my thought on this one was this. Now this one needs more of the twenty one rye. I think again. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of Jack it up. It's, it's it's very sweet. It's very sweet up front, like with the weeder and the corn. Yeah, it still carries that spice though. I think all throughout. Yeah, very spicy. Right? But it is. It's a little bit sweet up front. I'm looking at the numbers too on this thing I was doing. Ooh, that's good. I don't mind that, but yeah, it is. It is very. It's very much on the sweet side. Crushable sweet. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'll pour the rest go, back of the go back to the first one again. Yeah. Day. What would that be? That's pretty damn good, man. At a third, a third, a third. Yeah. 
you know, that is pretty damn good. All right. Let me, let me, now this is a very, now this is our, actually, this is our man. Like kind of like if we had a mash bill, this mm -hmm. is it. It's 75 corn, 15 wheat, seven rye, 3% malt. That's actually been our kind of core mash. And now again, that changes. You're going to see some changes obviously, but that's, uh, right. that, that's interesting. All right, Scotty, let's, uh, let's go, let's go reverse here. Let's do. Let's amp up the 21% ride. So let's do, um, let's see here. We did 555, five, five, 843. Five, five, five. I give you one too. I, 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 cause yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm actually, yeah. I don't, I don't even have the sample. I'm, I just have a batch 22. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Give us uh, give, or Danny, yeah, I'm whatever. At, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at it. I'm just using our mash bill calculator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go so, for it. I, Cause a lot of times when Danny are, are going into a batch, I always like, dude, you gotta like, whatever you think it might be. Go the polar opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever you think the best ones are, flip the switch. Cause a lot of the times, if you amplify one that might be it, as a, as it's on its own, might be the weakest. Actually, I, yeah. it, 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 I don't know. It's weird how that all works. So I was going to, I was going to say the, I was going to say to maybe try one now amping up the weeder and yep, playing with that. Exactly. Cause I was, that's what I was just thinking. All right. So Mike, so what's your, what's your, uh, what's your blend here you want us to do? Well, I mean, I'm just because I'm using that 15 ml as yeah. the, the baseline. So I, I mean, I just did. Uh, and Danny, feel free to chime in. I'm just using the mash bill calculator. I did eight ml of the wheat. Eight of the wheat. Okay. Three of the rye. Three of the rye. Four of the corn. All right. Yeah, okay. let's do that one. All right. Now this is a. Now it's in. This is obviously almost 25 percent wheat. Or this the mash bill is almost 25 percent wheat. Yeah, I'm not using pipettes anymore. I'm just freaking pouring. Yeah, man, just get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting in there, dude. All right, four, Jason, four. while you're blending that up, so what happened with Ohio State this weekend, dude? Man, everyone's. I got like 15 messages this week about Ohio State losing. <laughs> I did not grow up here. I don't care. <laughs> That's right. You're from Long Island, man. Yeah. yeah. You're like on the Hofstra bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, Hofstra and Rutgers. That's all I knew growing up. <laughs> here, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let as, a, as, so a, funny, big, as a Big Ten, as a Big Ten fan, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened to Ohio State. Ohio State is not as good as they've been in the past. Period. That that's not as good a football team. I mean, they they struggled week one against Minnesota a little bit. Now, granted, they played Oregon, who was a is a really good football team. And they played with them, but I mean, Oregon really, I mean, they kind of took it to them a little bit. Yeah. So, well, and know. the thing was, it was at the big house too. Yeah. Our so this is, so this is, well, this is all, this is all I've year. heard. Yeah. This is all I've heard this week about Ohio state. Um, we lost all of, like every freaking like all-star we had on defense and offense last year, yeah. went to the, went to the NFL. So we have a whole, an entirely new defense. You have a rookie quarterback. I mean, you can't always expect these guys to like, okay, we have a whole new team. They're still going to be the, one of the top five teams in football. I don't, I don't, I, I guess maybe Alabama that works, but Ohio State lost a lot of players. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see how they could come in and just be like top five automatically. And so. look at Clemson. Same thing happened with them too. Yeah. They lost a lot of guys and. They'll always be good. Look, <laughs> dude, you're talking. I got Rutgers, man. We don't. Yeah, exactly. Got, we got the College they, of New yeah. Jersey and Rutgers. They, like, Rutgers, Rutgers, Rutgers has a football team. <laughs> What's that? Rutgers has a football team. Yeah, well, actually, you know, it's one of the first college football teams ever in the country. Oh. Yeah, and I think and they the got, first college they, football game ever took place at Rutgers, well, Princeton. I remember before I moved, there was there was a couple of years there where they were they were really good. When wow. Ray Rice was there. Remember yeah, Ray, Ray Rice? Rice? Yep. And they were like, I think Rutgers might have been in the ACC or something. Oh, Big East with Louisville. They were there. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's it. That was a while ago. Ohio State has no defense. Rutgers could – but 40, 40 against Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, their defense is young. They're, they're not seasoned at all. So, I mean, I mean, you can't – I don't understand how the pollsters work just because it's Ohio State. And they have a whole new team. You want to automatically make them, you know, top five. I'd like to. I want to go to a game at the Horseshoe, though. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I will say, my first game I went there, I could not. There was I had never experienced anything like that. There was nothing like it. 
<laughs> I mean, it's got to be ridiculous, you know. It's so it's so different than going to a an NFL game. Like NFL games are loud and crazy, but I mean, there was so much pomp and circumstance leading up to the game, and then you have all the stuff that they chant like during the game, and there's over a hundred thousand people. Yeah, to just you're just. I think I left that place just screaming at everyone because I was like deaf. <laughs> I was like, "You guys have a cab yet?" <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm digging the nose on this one, Scott. You try this one yet? Or are you still uh, you still mingling it? Yeah. All right, get that in the glass, baby. Oh man. Yeah, I'm digging this nose. It's not as sweet. It's a little bit, a little bit more balanced. I would, I would say. You get some of the uh, the juicy fruit notes. I think for the 99 corn that come through a little bit still, but you still get the weeder and you get the caramel notes. I get the caramel on the nose. Ooh. It was interesting. I'm, I mean, I have no idea, so I'm interested to actually yeah. hear what you guys think too. It's, that has it's, a nice. It's good. It's good, but man, I'll tell you what. There's something. I don't know what it is about that first third, third, third. I don't know what it is about it. Oh man, what cereal is this, Jason? This is. Let's see. This is a cereal. <laughs> this is a. Yeah. This is a. This is a. This could be like a uh, like some kind of like fruity pebbles or something. It's like if you took like a quarter, a quarter cup of like honey nut Cheerios and a quarter cup of fruity pebbles, and then you ate that together in a bowl. Oh my god! Right, Danny? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just processed that. I was like, "Well, that's ridiculous." It took a second. Like, yeah, if I could taste that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and and I think what's cool too, like, look, we if you go down the path of wheat you kind of know too, like directionally, like you kind of have a baseline for the, your first one, the second one, the third, you know, high wheat, you could try a high rye. You could try, you could try a couple of those different, you kind of know directionally where that's going as a high wheat. You know what I mean? Like you can kind of say, okay, I think I want to take that high wheat and how do I throttle it from there? Um, All right. Well, directionally, or if you want to go first, you know, keep, keep, I think you just keep chipping away at it. That's the beauty of it. There is another blend I want to try, and I think um, Fire. Scott, let's uh, Scott, let's amp up the twenty-one percent a little bit. Yeah, I know that's one you wanted to try. I think I, let's do. I, some, I somehow like that twenty-one. The twenty-one rye is the base. Let's do a seven. Let's do a seven-four-four with the twenty-one percent rye being seven. Okay, cool. Right. Let's try that's that one. Four-four. Yeah, yep. this is interesting. So this is actually kind of like the first one, right? It's, now, it's the close. only difference is, is you throttled the wheat by three points. Yes. And we're amping up the 21% a little bit. So now your corn base, so your corn is still at 75. Yeah. Your rye is at 10. Your wheat's at 12. Your malt's at three. So you're very, right, so you're is, only yeah, three. Okay, so this is getting into a, an interesting blend here then. So you're getting close. You're, you're just basically, that's a, this isn't too, this is close to the first one now with some variation. Okay. This is this is so much friggin' fun. I'm telling you guys, just go out and get some graduated cylinders and just start blending at home. Hundred percent. You could do it with <laughs> every anything. Thank you. So it's sugar kitty, so it's fruity nuts. Yeah, fruity nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can, find, we can, find some brands with like some, you know, simple like two grain right, so smashes seven and, uh -huh. seven and just start blending them together. Well, I mean, we we really wanted to go. We really wanted to to do a uh, a proper four grain because that's something we haven't uh, offered yet in our, yeah. um, you know, through through our through, you know the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club. So we find we get a four grain in our portfolio. This would be great. So we we kind of went in like we definitely wanted to use the wheat, the rye, the corn, everything. Yeah. I mean, what, and what's interesting, I mean, we kind of didn't know that going into it, but it, I mean, what, what's kind of been cool about our, the blend that we've always kind of stuck with and have been using is you're going to get that kind of grain roller coaster. Like you're going to kind of pick up those different notes from each, each of at least, uh, obviously each of the four grains for sure. Oh, dude, that's my favorite. Which one was that? 
So yeah. Danny, that's a, that's set, it's it's seven ml of the twenty one, four of the forty five, and four of the ninety nine. Wow, I'm actually it's bringing out some fruitier notes in it in this. If you guys tried this blend, seven milliliters of the twenty one percent rye, and then four and four of the other the other two. That's nice. All right, let me try this. Let me one. hold on. It's 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 bringing out. It seems to be bringing out the best of a little bit of all of them. I'm getting the corn. I'm getting the wheat. The wheat. Um, the wheat profile. Getting some fruit. So that's the seven four. Okay. And it's keeping that spice too. Ooh, I like the nose already on. Oh, it. dude, I think you're going to be pretty impressed on the palate, Scotty. Hmm. It's really nice. It's got a really, it's got like this building finish to it where it kind of starts off like you're going to get this black pepper and then it just kind of elevates. Yeah, I think uh, I think we might have nailed it with that. That's really good. Nice. That's really good. It has this, uh, are you getting like nice. that, you're getting like that elevated finish, Scotty? Where it kind of starts off like a nice easy finish and then all of a sudden it just starts lifting up. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You still, you still have that lingering, like, sweet and spice and that rye factor that's there. This one isn't overly drying either. That's, that's really nice. I think out of all of them, this is, uh, this is definitely my favorite so far. 75. You know, it's funny, Danny. This, the, the 75 corn as a baseline seems to always generally – be that magic number. Seventy. Right, so we went. So with this. So this one we went. We went seven rye, mm -hmm. yes. four wheat, four corn. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's like the I, wheat I and really, corn are just really kind of like what that what that rye is, is complementary parts. Yeah, Scott. Is there anything else you want to tweak in this? Man, I don't know. Like, I mean, I I think the balance of it is really nice. Like, I think you get. This is one of those things where like knowing that we're doing a blend, you're you're kind of pulling out each component, like which is nice, which in in a blend like this, this is this is I think kind of what you want to be able to taste is that each component, but but uniformly they're all they they balance really well with each other. So and I and I think that one of the best things too is you put that in a glass and then or put that in a, a sample bottle, mm -hmm. cap it. And then try it again tomorrow. Yeah, and see, see or, what or happens. Or even, even do a third, a third, a third, too, as a benchmark, as a baseline, too. So you got, mm -hmm. you're kind of comparing one against another, but yeah. that's usually. Yeah, I, I've kind of used the 555 as the baseline all night to kind of go back to. Yeah, no, that's that's how we do it, too. I mean, that's that's exactly that's our problem. Right. Yeah, like tomorrow will become more full body instead of, you know, right now it's, probably a little um kind of light you know there's like a lightness to it if that makes sense yeah or yeah I, I would say I going say, going back to the 555 there's it's a little bit more it's just a little more muted compared to this i like the fact that there's that 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 rye that's in there that's kicking this thing up a little bit and it's i mean that finish is nice and long and mm -hmm. kind of peppery spicy but still that sweetness that's there See, we're gonna make. I don't have. We don't have the. I don't have the samples in front of me. So I'm gonna make. We'll make it tomorrow when we're at the office. But do you? Uh, is how's the nose on it? Nice. I mean, I I I like the I like the pepper. I like the pepper and the sweetness nice. that's there. Yeah, there's a really nice balance of sweet and spice with this blend. There's yeah, like you're not you're that's... not nose, you're not nosing it, and you're not just getting all sweetness, or you're not getting all spice. You've got that that really nice balance that's there. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that to me. I love a good nose. I think sets me up to. Yeah. Like I'm going to enjoy what I'm about to sip. Yeah. Um. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> Actually, uh, Kenny has a good question for the guys below that, Scotty. <clears throat> How long does the blend sit in the blending tank before going into bottle? We'll leave it uh, at least 24 hours. Okay. Gotta let mingle. Let it mingle. No, no. Let me, let me, let me ask you guys this. So, in terms of like where we're at right now with whatever it is we choose, um, are there are there other 
Are there other things that we could implement that would somehow alter this? Like I know we were originally talking about maybe like a toasted barrel, like, like knowing what we're at here and kind of knowing what you guys do in terms of the, the blends, you know, how would this maybe work with like a, a toasted barrel, you know, aspect? Hmm. I, so, cause you went higher on the rye. Yeah. Danny, you may, maybe I'll, I mean, this is my first thought. Danny may may differ because you went higher on the rye. Like I think this would do well in a low char, high toast barrel. So like a one or two char, high heavy toast, um, and let it sit for three months. I think that would do yeah. really nice. I think if generally you, I like the sweeter, like the higher corn, higher wheat. If you're using a char five and the lower toast, so the char five mediums. To me, they they do better with the sweeter kind of like the weeder the weeders of the corns. But if you're if you're looking for that kind of traditional toasted profile, yeah, um, char one, char two, heavy toast. But it's got to sit. It's gonna suck yeah. if you only let it go for thirty days or less yeah, than that. Right. I mean, it's got to be in the bar that toasted barrel for at least three months. Yeah. yeah, and that's when it all comes together. And what's beautiful is you start getting you get that rye spiciness from your from your actual. You're getting that four grain, but you're getting that rye because your rye has 10% 10 rye in your final mash of your blend. But then you're getting that char and that toast all complementing it. Yeah. And it really rounds it out nice, but it just takes a little time. I mean, that's, that's what I was kind of like, not groundbreaking, but thing. you know, like, geez, what are you on? Like, what did, did you go? Did you go a higher rye? Did you go more rye? I did a nine, three, three, just to compare. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Like if we were, if we were considering going to a toasted, do we, like that's a good one. Like I was thinking in my head. So how, what's the 933 like? It's it it basically bumped up the rye to yep. so it's 75 corn, 13 rye, nine wheat, three malt. So you're really just throttling those two mashes, uh the wheat and the rye on both of them. Um I don't know. So you went so your other blend you've got right now, Jace, you went nine, you went nine rye, three wheat, three corn. Yeah, I think I still like the seven four four better. Okay, I it's feel really like interesting. There's something about the wheat mm -hmm. that does have some it has a material impact on the but We've tried yeah, to get yeah. rid of the wheat. We've actually tried to get rid of the wheat because it's inconsistent, it's expensive, and honestly, it's hard to get. Yeah, you yeah. get you get the um, the nine three three is still good. I feel like it's actually a little nicer on the nose, but it's not as balanced on the palate. Okay, it's not. You're getting more of that drying aspect to yeah. it where okay. where the All wheat right. and the corn are really complementing it. And that was the one thing I did like about the 744 was that each each kind of component, like, you know, there Shines was through. one that was overshadowing another, which is what you want in a blend, so. Yeah, man, I'm just going, I'm just going all in here. So I'm just like trying shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean, even gonna, like if, I'm looking at, and that's that's what's, that's what's cool. I mean, they... I'm looking at a mash bill 7.5. If, if you do your 555 and, and then just tweak it ever so slightly. just Yeah, yeah. I was thinking if you uh, throttle the wheat down to 3.5 and keep the four corn even, at four and rye at 7.5. Even going to actually okay, so, 7.5, so, the rye is at 50%. Yeah, even going to like a four wheat, you know, like keeping it like a, hovering around the fives, it'd be a, just as like a pulse check to see how that changes that five, five, five. I'm trying one more blend here. I want to, I want to kind of do a uh, six, five, four type thing. I'm going to do six, six of the rye, five of the corn and then four of the wheat. I'm just going to kind of work my way down. All right. And I want to, I want to see what this does. Cause I, <laughs> this is like, this is, it's, this is so much fun. fun. I can't even like, stop. Yeah, cause this is exactly how we get like, we start getting into something and we start finding something we like, and then we just, we go faster right, so and faster. and five corn. Okay. So I six of the, six of the, six, so six of the 21% rye, Scott. Yeah. Five milliliters yep. of the corn whisk of the, of the high corn yep. and four and 4% 4 of the wheat. Okay. Yeah. I'm on uh, what was it? Seven, four, four. Let me pull it up once. The other one, yeah, the uh, the last one that we really liked was seven four four. So that was seven twenty one percent rye, four wheat, and four of the corn. 
I was this, the char threes. This is a six. This is a six five four. Oh, Danny, you said you're saying char three. I, I'm, char I three will kick the, ass too. The the rye is, it's like it's there, and and I feel like the just a little bit higher of a char will kind of like clean out that rye a little, uh, if that makes sense, and give it more body, instead of like um like a thin spice. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that right. idea. I really, I really like this nose on this six five four right now. Me right. too. Me so wait, too. wait. Sorry, just repeat that. So six rye, five wheat, five corn, yeah, six, five. No, so six rye, five corn, four wheat. Yeah. Got it. Oh man, the nose on this is nice. I'm just hoping it matches the palate. Five four. Yeah. Dude, that's good. Oh shit. <laughs> seven four four who yeah <laughs> yeah scotty this man that's tough man <laughs> sex is hard <laughs> You're right there, i'm digging yeah. i'm digging this one six Oh yeah, it, it it kind of amped up a little bit more of the sweetness. The definitely definitely yeah. just a little small amount added. That added little small, it, that little small amount let in a little bit more sweet. It's not as the seven four four I like, but I was still getting that little bit of a drying note. This I'm not getting any of that, and it's just giving me sweet spice and balance. This is this is my jam right here. And then the other, I'm just hold on. I'm just going back to the other one. Ooh. Okay. And the nose is nicer too. Oh, dude, this is so good. And it still carries that elevating spice characteristic. I mean, I mean, anybody, anybody who likes spice is, I mean, you you can't go wrong with. It. I mean, it, it's it's spicy up front. It's sweet. It's spicy. It, it's very I like like, like waves. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of like a nice little. It takes you through a little bit of a roller coaster. It's sweet, it's spice, then it gets sweet again, and then it lifts at the end. It lifts up and gives you more spice right at the very end. As long as that spice doesn't turn into, like, just hot fire. No, no. Yeah, it's, it's, not, not, it's, it's not like hot. It's not like hot cinnamon, like, you know, like a cinnamon red hot or anything. It's just a nice, like, lingering spice that's there. Yeah, it's like just a beautiful finish. It's not hot by any means. No. It's interesting. So six five four. I mean, if you think about it, you started off at the baseline five five five. Yep. You kind of throttled it one way. Yeah. You throttled it another way. You know that that's yeah. Yeah. What, what would it's what would this on. match? What would this six five uh, four be? What would this? Yeah. Match? What would this match uh, yeah. look like in the calculator, Mikey? I was just looking at that too. Uh, so if that's actually high corn. It's seventy seven corn, twelve wheat, eight. Rye three malted barley. All right, and All I right. think that higher keeping the corn higher is what drove up the wheat because the ninety nine corn. Yeah, if that makes sense, because you got yeah. a forty five. The percentages of wheat, yeah. I th I feel like the twenty one percent rye is like the it's like the rock of the entire blend. Yeah, and then when you mess with the corn and the wheat, it starts. If you like, if you lower the wheat or you higher the wheat. Those seem to be changing it the most is the corn and the wheat aspect of it. No fireball. No fireball. No fireball. Yeah, yeah it's oh, definitely yeah. not fireball. This has a really beautiful, long, lingering finish with a lot of sweetness up front intermingled. And this here's the catch. We are going to bottle this in sleeves, 50 ml plastic bottles in front of the store. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! We'll them in big plastic buckets. Yeah, the big buckets. <laughs> hey, just 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 out of curiosity, like going, ba going out. back to that that seven four four that we tried originally. What would what is that mash bill? Just I'm just curious. To know, uh, like, that one was very traditional. Hold on, I'm pulling it right up. So that one's that one's seventy five corn. Okay. Twelve wheat. Okay. Ten rye. Three malt. All right. So 77, 12, 8, 3 versus 75, 12, 10, 3. Precisely. Okay. All right. So we just kind of swapped out a little bit. Basically, the the rye and the wheat are kind of like higher or lower. Those are the two know. that are always inter. I mean, those are kind yeah. of the, those two. If you're if you're keeping your corn 
kind of at 33, like in that kind of wheelhouse, you're going to really, it's the maneuvering of the rye and the wheat. Yeah. And usually how we do it. So like batch five of our barrel strength was a little bit more, it had like a citrus. It was more like summery mm -hmm. and citrus zest and like this orange notes. And yeah. we kind of throttled the wheat when we went uh, the kind of the past two, six and seven, we've been really kind of digging in on the rye because they've yeah. been really good. And so we've been going for more of those spicy kind of darker tobacco notes that we're getting yeah. from the rye. So the, the 744 I liked, but I felt like it, it was missing a little bit of sweetness. And I think going to the 654 did that. It, it added a little bit of a sweetness layer to it, which I feel like it needed. And I, I, and I think that up the corn by almost 7%. Yeah, that. yeah, that's a big. That's a big jump. It's a big jump. There, there seems to be more. There seems to be more of like a like a vanilla citrus, like orange citrus note that's now in this in this six five four. Yeah, you're getting you're getting a little bit more vanilla, like creamsicle, like yeah, creamsicle. Yeah, it's, it's coming through a little bit more creamsicle with a little bit of black pepper dusting on it. Thirty three, thirty three. Yeah, I mean, it went from twenty six. So on the seven four four. Yeah. Um, you're at twenty six percent corn. At the mm -hmm. six five four, you're at thirty three point three. Yeah, that's it, a, I mean that's a it, material jump for sure. It, it needed it needed that extra little lift of sweetness. Yeah. I think. I, I think it de I think it definitely kicked up a little bit more of that that like kind of orange like kind of a dreamsicle type of creamsicle type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's really funny too, like when we're like because we're looking at that in fifteen ml, and so I don't know. I'm like, okay, here we go, and then it just kind of comes to full. And we could take videos and pictures, but when you start dumping it, you're like, oh, wow, that's not five mls. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. like, you actually can see yeah. the yeah. 7% very clearly by the amount that's going into the tank. You're like, oh, shit, that is a lot more. So, so Danny, <laughs> are you, Danny, are you able to replicate this blend and try it? Yeah. 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 Paul, I just, all right. So, so this, so this mash bill would be 77 corn, 12 wheat, eight rye, three malted barley. Yep. Yep. I got yeah, that down nice. here. Numero uno. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering what Danny thinks of the blend. If he's tried this, yeah, year. I would love to. I would love to know. I would love to know what what you guys. Oh yeah, Mike, you can't. You don't have the stuff to blend it, do you? I know the newborn. It's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Danny's got twins. He's got like, one more kid than you. It's not like you own the blend. Yeah, but I said it first, so it counts. <laughs> <laughs> I left, uh, so for the so, so for those of you guys watching, Mike just had a, a a beautiful baby, and Danny just had twins. So, so both of them are uh, you know about yeah. seventeen. They're about seventeen kids deep right now. <laughs> 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 we started this company. We had no kids. I know. Right? <laughs> I mean, like two, there's five. Yeah. yeah, we were like hoping for. Kids. See what see what <laughs> drinking bourbon does to your kids. Don't. <laughs> Our wives love us. Yeah, I I would love to get I, I would love to get Danny's perspective on this blend. Yeah. Ooh. And by the way, Danny's not a man of many words, so. I'm not wait. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, we we saw that off the off the bat. So. <laughs> wait, Danny, what, what are you getting on the nose? Talk to me about that. But I, I get like the caramel on the nose. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's why I I really like that. I think that's what some of the best blends of these mash bills produce because mm -hmm. um, sometimes they get really like dry and and yeah you can't, I hate that. right and you can't visualize the thing um, with blending these three these three mashes is it can dry out you can just snag ethanol there's there's a lot of shit that can go wrong with it so just it smells i'll try like it tomorrow too i'm not overly yeah, that that'll be the other thing. Trying it tomorrow as well, just kind of go like once you've you know kind of taxed the the pal a little bit here. But I think that's what this this is nice. I like this better than the five five five. Yeah, a lot yep. better because yep. there was like a little bit of a muted part of the five 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 where like it dropped off, and you're like there was like a split yeah. second where you didn't taste anything. But this has this is consistent all the way through. Yeah. And it's got like, yeah, it's got its peaks and valleys still, but it's still like, there's still something all the way across the board, all the way down the throat and everything. That's what I love about it. Yeah. And like that spice, you're right, like comes out, but it's not, 
it's not like a it's not a hot it's like a it's a it's like a beautiful like a cinnamon um just uh yeah there's nothing there's nothing that's hot about it like there's not i mean there's that spice so i mean like i know sometimes i think people like will confuse the the spice for heat sometimes but there's there's not that that yeah. like off-putting heat that you know or or ethanol or whatever you want to call it there's not that for sure yeah no i'm trying to think like how to just best describe something when someone's like that's eh, a little hot you know, like that term, ah, it's a little hot. Well, I, I, th like I think that's the, I think it's the burn factor. I think it's the, I think it's that like that nail polish. When people think of hot, I think it's yeah. that nail polish. You kind of feel like uh, it's not the finish. The finish is like long. It almost hits you in the center of your esophagus. Whereas hot, I, I always took it as like, it's like kind of like a little rough going down. Yeah. I mean, hot, yeah. hot is like if you're like filling up your like lawnmower and like the gas gets a little too close yeah. to the nose. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, come on, you know. Yeah, this is yeah. this is not hot at all. This is spice. No, no. This is spice. This is caramel. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's some of that juicy fruit that's still there. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely some vanilla. A little like getting a, a slight hint of that orange too. That orange spice. Yeah. It's, Are, you it's a, mint? Are you guys getting in the traditional MGP mint? You know, sometimes you get that mint profile from MGP. Yeah, not too much. I, I don't know if I pulled that much out or not. I don't think I'm getting too much mint in no, here. No, because I'm I'm always curious because you know some of these profiles MGP's got very distinct profiles and and you know when you do blend them I think you're actually kind of coming up with something I mean, a little I, bit I different. Mean, I could I could take a I could take a hard pull from this 21 rye and tell you if there's any mint in it. <laughs> I'm actually starting. I'm starting to get it, a little. Do it. <laughs> what's selling What's selling me on this blend too? I'm getting a little like. Overlaying like butterscotchy note on this, which is really well, nice. Well, I, I would tell oh. you, but I drink all mine. <laughs> hey, Jason, and and Scott, you guys know these blends change throughout. Yeah, the world. yeah. These Danny, are, what were you? Gonna, they're volatile. No, Danny, tomorrow, what were you? Yeah, tomorrow, Danny, what were you going to say? Like tomorrow, this blend is just going to thicken up, right? Okay. It's gonna it's gonna lose some of that edgy that uh like a little bit of sharpness. Okay. It's gonna round out the edges. So it's gonna just kind of um, create more of like a rounded flow through that, through that pace. Call All right, so cool. so we should so we should leave this blend out overnight. Go back to it. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're gonna come back to it and say, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, Danny, you know I look when we're doing blends on the fly. Generally, the one we like the best without sitting overnight is the one we always go with. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of directionally there. It's it's always a good. Uh, it's always a, just a good. Um, what do they call it? Like a Scott, head. what so are you like for so like for you guys? So rather than like like let it like mingle overnight, like if you if you get to that blend and like you know it now after going through different blends, like for you, is that what you stayed locked into? Like, is that like what you're committed to, or or will you will you go back tomorrow and like kind of take a look and and see how it maybe developed or you know. We're yeah, always definitely. well. We'll we'll always see how it developed because, like, we'll know where it's headed, but we'll always just check where it developed. All right. Well, clearly, I need to do That's this. One. The, well, and keep in mind too, we're doing batches of toasted, yeah. so we're not really doing many single barrels of toasted. So, like, mm -hmm. the state of Wisconsin, we're going to do like a three barrel batch. So that's not only are we blending our kind of like what you guys just did. So we'll come up like if you if I blend we blend up those three barrels. You know, maybe that we could fill up obviously three toasted barrels, so we fill them up, right? But if you if we're doing that a little bit higher, say it's like ten barrels, now we're picking and choosing barrels that we're blending together too for a batch of toasted. Those are the things that we're throttling quite a bit. Okay, even if it's like a two char, like who knows what? It doesn't even matter about the chars as much. It's more of like what's the mash of the juice in the barrel. And like, what, which ones are we working with? And so, so Danny, what would you, what would you think this six, five, four that we got, what do you think a toast would do to this? Would it improve it? Would, is it not the word toasting? What do you think? Yeah. Good call. Oh. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> he's he's going to say toast it. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's the reason why it's so popular. To not us, but just toast in general. It's so I personally think it's good. Right. Yeah. So Mike, so if we so if we chose this blend, um, say we go to it tomorrow, we say, Yeah, hell yeah, let's like, you know, pedal to the metal, let's go with this one. Well, um, 
We'll literally dump it tomorrow. Would our would our first iteration be the blend itself or the toast? I, I mean, I personally think it's we. I love the. I love. I mean, that's our barrel strength. I love the blend yeah. because I think that's truly that's the, to me that's where I like to start out at. Um, okay. I actually drink our barrel strength more than toasted, but. Um, you know, palettes change and I think it's fun. Now we're on this toasted kick. So that's what we're into. Yeah, I, I feel like everyone's doing, you know, we did a toasted rye, which is awesome. Um, yeah. I, I love the way this is Scott. What did you just remake it? Yeah, I did. I mean, <laughs> dude, we'll, we'll, if we're doing a toasted, we're going to let this ride. Like it'll be maybe ready. And yeah, long, like could be, I don't know, December, Jan. I have no idea. No, I mean, you I know, would, I mean, I guess, I guess here's just let it ride. It's like, yeah, I mean, I'm a, yeah. I'm I'm more of I'm more of a fan of of toasted on rye than I am bourbon. So I'm I'm not that I'm hesitant to do it, but six um, five four. That's, I, a I'd rather, that's an eight percent rye. Yeah, I'd rather do maybe the French oak finish if we could do that in the future. But 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 hear me out on this: the toasted, because yeah. our barrels, a lot of the toasted out there, there's no char. They're just pure, yeah. purely purely toasted barrels. So yeah. you've got. Vanillins coming in from the, the toast, mm -hmm. yeah, mixed with the rye pop. Yep. And it's usually a quick boom, boom, boom. And I'm not saying the finishing period, I'm just saying like getting those two together from yeah. a, from the two flavor profiles. And what we're doing is like, I think I kind of have a like this is like kind of more of a bourbon profile. You're maybe going to get a little bit more subtle spice. So if we drop this into a three heavy, three medium, two heavy, and I don't know, just let that thing go for a few months i'm telling you man they're they're i think they're awesome but danny you, you chime in man you're 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 closer to it than i am it's so hard you know they're they're awesome i mean it's just it's gonna yeah i think it would it would be really good you know what jason it's not gonna go it. bad it's not gonna be bad let's, put it that let's way. just do it you want you want to go toasted let's just do it let's let's see what it let's let's see what it does i mean i i think I think the nice part about this is that spice factor that it has. I don't think that that's going to go away like at all. No, and like, I mean, I think yeah, like no, what, won't. Yeah. What, what Dan and Mike are saying, like, I think it may ultimately in, enhance this. Like we're not going to dominate this thing with like the vanillins and things like that. So, okay. No, not with the char. You have to understand. Cause these are, these have char. These are char too. Yeah. So there's very, yeah. And, and honestly, the finishing period, like the, the extraction period on our toasted barrels is usually six weeks. Um, if it's a char five, a heavier char, it's quicker. If it's a, a lower char, it's longer. Yeah. So, I So, so, so uh, Adriana just said it. A toasted four grain will be something pretty unique for us. Oh, so I, I do like that idea. I mean, if so. you, Jace, if, Jace, if you still have a little bit of that, try that again. Like that's that spice there, I don't think it would be – and there's a no, nice it's sweetness. this. I keep, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of whiskey just drinking this point. It's so good. <laughs> I'm gonna try the blend tomorrow, though. I mean, I'm, I, I you know, like um, I said, I think it has, something. it has everything. I think it has everything Scott and I both look for in a, yeah. in a whiskey. It's, yeah. it's got sweet, it's got spice, it's got a very lasting finish without the burn. It kind of gives you everything. You're, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Danny mentioned that it's consistent. It kind of gives you like a nice little wave of flavors throughout the whole experience. Dude, I mean, look, at the end of the day, we have it, we have three barrels. I mean, that's a pretty good amount of juice. We could do yeah. both. And if you don't want to take the blend and if you just want to toast, we'll see. No, this this blend is ridiculous. I mean, I maybe we could, I mean, Mike, we, we get Mike, we could talk mean. we could talk offline about this if we wanted to do some just plain and then do a toasted run. I mean, it's really I mean, we're we're open for whatever you guys are willing to to do for us. So yeah, as long as we can call it the Back to the Future batch. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. definitely if we do if we if there's like multiple if we do like a regular version and a journey, journey version, Back to the Future. Yeah, it'll be a Back to the Future. We'll have like Biff. We'll have fucking you know. We'll have yeah, Doc Brown. We'll do something crazy with Back to the Future for sure. Yeah, Mike, we're loading up. We're looking Mike, at a lot of exotic barrels. Um, What's that, Danny? Sorry. That's a good point. It's, you know, we're blending three barrels. Like, we'll probably get, you know, with this blend, we'll probably come out around, you know, two full barrels, maybe. Okay. So, you know, you could one and one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a good, um, I guess, question for you guys. What's the yield, like, roughly that we're looking at for this? Well, that's uh, a good Grant, Grant, if, so. if, we, if we did, 
if we did one of just the blend and if we did one of the blend that's toasted, what do you, I mean, just, just, you know, ballpark. What do you think? Well, you could fill one toasted barrel, whatever's left over. You, you do all the blend. Okay. You know, so. We usually fill the toasted barrels up cause we're filling them. So it's usually 46 packs usually more or less. Okay. Yeah, it is. It is pretty creamy too. I will say the the uh, Cameron's asking about the mouth feel, the mouth, <laughs> the mouth experience, as they say. Yeah, it's pretty good. Are you looking at the numbers, Danny? Yeah, I don't have that calculator in front of me. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, Adam Dorman. Every toasted rye I've had has been a hitter. Toasted bourbon, on the other hand, has its ups and downs. Yeah, I think so too. I agree. Right? I think we're – yeah, I think we would lean on Danny and Mike to do uh, right by the by the toast profile um, based yeah. on what – based on the, the mash bill in this blend uh, being 77 uh, corn, 12 wheat, 8 rye, 3 malt. And we've, we've, been, we've been pumping out some toasted right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's only been bourbon, and the feedback's been pretty positive. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really – you know, it's interesting. I think it's a lot of it has to do with – because the bourbons, it's just different, obviously, than that rye pop you're going to get on a 95.5 or you're going to get on like just that kind of that kind of core kind of rye whiskey. Yeah, I, I absolutely love this blend. It's it's awesome. Yeah. I kind of want to let it. Shit, might just use it for batch bit. nine, dude. Barrel strength. Ship it. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. haven't even tried it. This oh, might not. Yeah. This, this might not appeal to your drinkers who like something very easy to sip because this has some. Not only spice, but it has some heft to it as well, I think, which is what we love. Yeah, no doubt. But you know what's I, funny? Agree. I mean, a lot of the palates too these days. Yeah. It's getting more intense. People are drinking higher ABV. Um uh, like it's yeah, know, what and I know we're I know we're doing this palette, I call it. I know we're doing this one through uh Kiriata too. So and I know they they carry the Penelope line. So if you guys are interested, I just threw a uh, a link in the in the chat so great yeah, folks what, too over there really good people yeah, yeah what what audriana said in the chat there um uh bourbon said wait i could go taste it the mass and drum if mike is ever at the shop when i'm in jersey <laughs> uh yeah audriana on, said man. audriana said i like what mike said about it having some char it won't be as heavy on vanillin because my worry is sweetening it too much yeah that's my worry too if you add a little bit of char to this uh kept the spice Agreed. added added a little bit more of the vanillin i think yeah. it could really do wonders for this that's that's the big that's a big factor right there is that this isn't just going to go in a, a completely toasted barrel yo yeah no they're not we don't have any just toasted barrels yeah, yeah. all of our barrels have a char and we've actually done we kind of have an idea of like what they're all working with um shit i mean honestly it could be a char 5 medium and maybe it's a shorter turn but yeah but well, I I, I want to try the blend. I mean, I'll sit with Danny. We can all talk as a group offline. I I just would want to. I, I would want to try it just because I I got my thoughts that a that a two three would be the best and let it sit for sixty nine. So so Mike, with your calculator or Danny, can you tell us with that ratio what the proof would be roundabout of this one, or no? Um. Yeah, I could I could look that up. Oh, Ninety two cases. Ninety two cases. It's probably like 121.1. <laughs> if it comes out to 1.21 <laughs> gigawatts, I I'm leaving. That's, that's it. <laughs> oh, that would be sick though, right? <laughs> How awesome. How awesome would that be? This would be the Well, what's funny is I know for a fact right if we now. put oh, on man. the ribbon like 1.21 gigawatts proof, that yeah, would be awesome. frowned upon by the TTB. It might. It might. <laughs> that would be what they call false advertising. <laughs> that's, that's very true. Yeah. yeah. So we could split this in half. Well, who's the, who the hell is the TTB anyway, right? Yeah. Wait, so, so Danny, you said you could split it in half. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about ninety-two cases. Uh, okay. Packs. Totally. Awesome. So we can do one of just the blend, uh, split it, and then do a toasted version. Oh, interesting. All right. That'd, that'd be, be dude. That'd be great. I mean that that would be kind of fun. I think it would give I think it would give people the option to taste it like our blend and then it toasted. Yeah, for sure. And I I mean on the toasted I it'll it'll take some time, but it I mean it's not like a year. Um, yeah, 
Well, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't, you know, if we could do the blend first and then down the line, like, hey, you guys remember the blend? Well, now it's been toasted. So I think. I mean, we put it in the toasted barrel yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So then it's just going to go and just let it ride. I, I, what's yeah. funny too with these toasts, it's like they got these ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows, ups and downs. And once you hit that kind of critical, once you hit that period of time where it's been out there for a certain amount of time, I mean, you start, I mean, there's a balance between the bourbon, the char and the toast. And I think it's right. just, when is that? And yeah. we usually pull samples of these twice a week. Um, right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make another blend of this as long as I have whiskey left and, uh, and, um, let it sit overnight here. I mean, I guess the good, I guess the good part is that like, as you sip on it, like you continue to just like kind of plow through it, which is a good sign that you have to make yeah. like a new blend. So that's good. I keep going back to it. Yeah, it's really, it's really, I mean, it's I really I, good. It's really, really good. Crushable? It's, that sounds like it's crushable. I'm excited to try it tomorrow at nine in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, couldn't you? Well, no, as I say, you could take the three and kind of get a round, kind of a roundabout proof on it. But oh, well, I don't think we're hitting. I mean, I mean, that it's one. We're looking at one ten, one hundred ten, one hundred sixteen, one hundred nineteen. I don't think we're breaching the one point. I mean, I mean we're, we're not far off of the the third, a third, a third. So, I mean, it would change slightly. But if you took all three of the proofs. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of figure it out roughly. It's yeah, that's, that's about one, it's going to be about one sixteen. About well, one sixteen too. Is if we dump it tomorrow, Danny. See, when you have Danny on the line, he runs the production schedule. Yeah, about one sixteen. Okay, that's a great proof. I that's think a really good proof. Well, this I is really you nice. You want to clear up the barrel space, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> I know why he wants to dump it tomorrow. <laughs> he needs the room. <laughs> Danny's like, I need room. Bring more barrels and let's go. Come on. Yeah, I was like, well, I was like, damn, Danny. Really, I mean, yeah, actually, Danny said that I was even like, that's it. I no shit, but he wants well, the space. Yeah, he's like, all right, let's let's, let's 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 dump this shit. Here we go. Come on. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna crush this one and make a new one. Screw it. <laughs> we we walked into the off, into the warehouse one day. We had to literally walk across barrels for like 50 feet. To get into the office, we couldn't. There was no pathways. We're just yeah. We're yeah we got shipping containers. We put yeah. shipping containers in our driveway. How awesome is that? Yeah, I, that yeah. is pretty awesome. I cannot. Yeah, Mike, tomorrow or I, I cannot wait for you to try this plan. I think you really dig it, man. Mm -hmm. We'll do. Uh, we'll we'll. Uh, I'll call you. We'll we'll. I'll video. We'll video it. Maybe we'll go on Facetime or something. Well, I have a Google phone, so do well. Yeah. I got a Google. <laughs> I got a Google phone too, so I'm good. Yeah, oh, Google. dude. Hey. Jason, duo me. <laughs> <laughs> duo. That is uh, so Google. Google doesn't have FaceTime; it has Duo. That's yeah, our that's FaceTime. Right. Hey Google. Hey Google. <laughs> hey Google. <laughs> so yeah, so I think uh, Scott, what do you think? I think we got our blend, man. Yeah, dude, I think this is. Uh, I really, I really like. Uh, I really like that blend. That's for sure. That six five or yeah, the six five four. That's a good one. Six five four. So six twenty one six per uh, six milliliters of the twenty one percent rye, um, five milliliters of the ninety nine um, percent corn, mm -hmm. and then four milliliters of the forty five percent wheat. We are in it to win it. And I'll 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 pull up. We'll I'll make all three of the ones: the five 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 and the seven four four two, just to get a baseline. But I'm excited about it to try it. Yeah. Uh, Scott Pigsley. Scott Pigsley is asking. With the weather changing, how will that affect the toasted aging? Sucks. <laughs> Not as good. It takes longer. We had, oh, yeah. uh, we had like a nice little heat wave in New Jersey a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It was like 90s for two weeks. And I mean, the barrels that we dumped that week just were, it was like, it finished in two weeks that would have taken two months. Oh, really? wow. I mean, it was so hot. It was almost 95 in our facility. And yeah, when it's cooler, like right now, and we have AC, but like right now in our facility, if it's say it's like probably outside, it's like 70 degrees. So you guys are oh, finishing, nice. you guys are finishing and aging in, uh, in Jersey? Just toasted. Yeah. Just this product. Okay. Okay. So nice. we bring barrels in, process them, blend them, come up with a couple blends and then have we have all of our toasted barrels here and you kind of need to i mean you have to you got to pull sand i mean just th these things are yeah. pretty volatile in terms of just where they're going and where they're heading and 
you need to be able to pull samples pretty frequently. Yeah. So having them 700 miles away just wouldn't work. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to have this sit overnight, and I think we really got something, man. Literally putting. I think you guys place. come on in. Maybe we'll all go to the Yankees. They're going to be in the playoffs. Hopefully, they're playing like shit right there now. There we go. But there we go. Come, we'll come in. We'll all right, watch. that's it. That's it. He fucking said Yankees. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> what are you, you're a Mets fan, right? Yeah. So uh, my see, I grew. I grew. I grew up in. I grew up in Sayreville. So I'm a huge Mets fan. I was, I, was really? a Yankee, really? I was a Yankees fan. So like, I remember a lot of the the '80s, like really shitty. Like Ooh. Yankees Ooh. teams. Now I grew up. I was a huge Don Mattingly fan. Like that was my guy. Oh Seriously. God! Oh, oh! Dude, that's so funny. I didn't know you grew up in Sayreville, man. That's like yeah. right around the corner from us. Yeah. That's yeah. it, Scott. Scott, I might have to go another direction with the Mets <laughs> journey with you. <laughs> I mean, and honestly, with the Mets, like Francisco Lindor, that's like the first good game he's had all season, right? <laughs> yeah, he fucking killed you guys. It was he awesome. killed us. It was awesome. Oh, I don't know. I, this man. Is, we better make. Well, I think we, I think we nailed. Uh, I think we nailed a pretty good blend here. I think it'll be interesting to see. Like, I, I already think this is good and I, really good, and I think it'll be very interesting to see how this changes in the in the toasted barrel. Awesome. Yeah, and also, uh, and also the just as it sits. Twenty seven. Well, <laughs> Scott. First of all, see, the Yankees always bring that shit up. They won most of those when there was like seven teams. Like, relax. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everyone, it drives me nuts. They always bring that shit up. Always, 27 world championships. You won 14 of them when there was like five teams in the fucking MLB. Relax. <laughs> hey, we're going to take care of this guy right here. We'll just give him the old mute to here. Look at this guy. He's, look, at him. look at him. He's going to have a fit. Look at this, this guy. He's going to have it's a so fit. It's so funny because I got a lot of friends that are Mets fans. A lot of my family are Mets fans. And they're, so, they're all, every Met fan is just angry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, ha we haven't had as easy as a life as, Met, as Yankee fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It can't, awesome. it can't be all cocaine and hookers like the Mets are used to. So <laughs> That's right. And by the way, 30 for 30 on ESPN, tonight and tomorrow, they're doing a special on the 86 Mets. The really? year the year, uh, the, the year the year the bad boys won. I mean, was the there was there has was there ever another year of the Mets? It's always the 1986 Mets. <laughs> it's always that. Well, we were we were close in 2015, but that didn't go well. <laughs> uh what, what are we going to have to listen to tonight? Is it going to be the 86 Mets and then it'll be Lionel Richie dancing on the ceiling? <laughs> I hope so. That'd be great. <laughs> I would love to listen to that right now. <laughs> yeah. This well, is, I think uh, we, uh, I think we got a, I think we got a good one uh, tonight. Yeah. So. Guys, you, you know, and tomorrow, man. like what, what's going to happen to this when, when it, when it's actually dumped and it's like part of a, a bigger dump, it's going to, it'll actually be a lot. Really happy with it. You get a lot more body. Nice. We might have to. Wow. We might have to come in for this and try this right from the barrel to see how this blend is going. <laughs> yeah. Come on well, in, man! I literally Absolutely. just put it in the production tracker, so I think we're gonna dump it. Oh, it's inside. Yeah. Danny, Danny's I've like, never seen Danny bump things around because we got that's Jace. Now, all right, we, that's correct. Danny in, really wants the space. We brought in more tanks, so we can we can juggle more. Project. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. All those tanks came in from Barstool. Plus, plus, I think. Plus, I think Danny likes the blend, so I think he's excited. I, I am excited. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I like these three barrels for for Daryl and Don. That you know. That's right. I'm, honestly, blending three barrels is the hardest thing over blending. You know, two hundred <laughs> barrels. So. Well, we got a lot of names that we can go with. We can go with you know the. Mets and cocaine, and we can go with the what the eighty six. Whatever you guys are. Well, now I'm thinking. I'm thinking for the uh, for the regular blend, like Mets are amazing, and then the amazing Mets theme, and then for the toasted one, we'll just do an all out Yankees suck label. Be great. <laughs> We're gonna take care of this guy again. He's starting to get crazy. I think the bourbon's kicking in on this guy right now. Look at him. Here he goes again. <laughs> all right, he's he's back. He's back. cheers. <laughs> that is awesome. no, it'll have to come up we'll, we'll come up with a good one well i won't he will so well uh well mike and danny want to thank you for hanging out with us tonight and, uh, yeah, man. yeah this was uh we've been talking for a while we're glad we finally got together and do that and and do this together um thanks for talking us through it a little bit giving us some of the background of penelope and again congrats on the twins and 
Congrats on the baby, Mike, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, and yeah, thank, thank you, guys. thank you. Yeah, I mean that's a thing. Yeah, I mean for us, like we we appreciate all of this. I mean to be able to do something different and offer something to to our patrons, it's it's what we want to do. So you know, thanks for uh, thanks for letting us be a part of this. No, oh, man, thank you guys for all the support too. I mean, it means a lot. I mean, you guys have been so supportive of ours for for a long time, and. Even when we had that two-year 80 proof, <laughs> <You know? laughs> I appreciate it. But I'll be honest, um, no, it's been a lot of fun. I was impressed. I mean, you guys were like whipping up lens like really quick. So that, that was awesome. I'm excited to try it tomorrow. Sorry, I couldn't, I didn't have it here with me tonight, but. I'm yeah, we're definitely uh, looking forward to hearing your thoughts about the blend. So uh, yeah, Danny, thanks for your help. Thanks for putting in production so fast. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it, guys. So as far so as far as in terms of um, like uh, bottling and all of this, we can look into early early part of 22 for for something like this right it's up to danny whatever whenever you guys really want it it's not yeah. like there's no rush I mean, the, well the the toasted is going to take a little yeah. longer right but uh yeah as far as the blend it's really like we can we can whip that up pretty quick well danny will uh yeah danny we'll lean on you once you mingle uh excuse me once you mingle them together and you you taste them and if you feel like whenever they're ready to go just let us know and we can We'll start making plans. Nice, yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, all right. We're actually gonna. It's gonna be at your house. We're gonna put it on a pallet. Probably should be on the pallet by six a.m. tomorrow. Oh, we'll be in yeah, Ohio, problem. Wisconsin, at like problem. seven p.m. tomorrow. You'll probably have a much easier time. You'll have a much easier time getting into Wisconsin than Ohio. I'm just saying. <laughs> we're actually we're the Amazon of bourbon. All of a sudden, you guys wake up in the morning. There's a pallet of bourbon on your. Bed. <laughs> <laughs> a pallet of bourbon. It's like a tank. A tank we're, of bourbon. We're good. Like in Wisconsin, we're used to getting booze all the time. So just bring it. We're we're yeah. used to it here. This is actually the Penelope Prime service. <laughs> That's good. Penelope yeah. Prime. There's something there, Mikey. Don't don't lose that. Blend it, you blend, it, you blend it, and you get it on your doorstep the next day. I, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't mind being a uh, a courier for that. I mean, it could be a couple <laughs> missing bottles here. Or there, yeah, you get a you get a bottle. Phone. You got I'm a right. bottle of Penelope bourbon and an Amazon Alexa, and you're set. <laughs> there you go. We send you pallets, go. you know, to our distributors, and uh -huh. they'll they'll send pictures, and people will just like rip open cases and pull bottles out. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Well. All right, there you go, guys. Or we I'll send uh, on that I think note. We, we nailed. Yeah. I think we nailed. I'll send on that one, fun so. note. <laughs> We have our we have our back to the future picks coming soon, we guys. Our, we have our back to the future one. Yeah. I've I've already I've already blended this one like three times. Now I'm gonna have to go back for a fourth one to somehow leave it. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. <laughs> I think we're uh, I think we're on to something here. So guys, thanks again. Uh so yeah, we'll we'll let everybody else know uh as to kind of how things are gonna develop with uh with the Penelope. Obviously the toasted will be, you know, in the first first part of next year sometime, but we'll uh We'll keep everybody posted with that. So, uh, Danny, Mike, thanks so much for uh, for going through all this and setting everything up for us. We uh, we really appreciate it. So, um, yeah. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah. If uh, if anybody who's watching tonight isn't part of the uh, the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club and you want to be part of all of this, uh, links are in the description. You can be uh, either through myself or Jason's Patreon page. It gets you part of the the Mash and Journey uh, Whiskey Club. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can join in on the fun stuff like this and, you know, get something that's different and, and unique. That's, that's one thing we're always trying to do is, is get everybody something a little, a little different. So, um, so yeah, thanks again, guys. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see everybody next time. Cheers guys. Thanks, Cheers everyone. guys. We'll see that you. Fun. We'll see you next time. Cheers guys. Cheers guys. Thanks a lot. Cheers.